everybody, uh, Creative Canopy is back again this week. Um, I'm sat here with um, Alex. Hello everyone. And uh, obviously myself, Lee. Um, so today, today we're actually going to be going through um, InDesign and talking about a few things, um, including pagination, how to number the A Master uh, document, and possibly have a look at the, the um, character frames. Um, character framing um, on here, for example, kind of how to do this sort of kind of thing. Um, so first off, uh, let's just talk about the, the facing pages and the document itself. Uh, currently, um, this is actually set for if you want to do like book binding, kind of uh, bounding. Um, it's not what we want. Now we want to print a booklet that's just stapled. So what we're going to do is we need to, firstly, we need to put on the facing pages option. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to document setup and we're actually going to tick the facing pages. And what this does actually is uh, it joins the pages together. So the facing basically. So, so is facing pages only good for like a staple booklet then? It's probably the best for it. Yeah. Because yeah. with the individual pages, You'd probably need them for like glued flaps, you know, for the for like hard book binding. Yeah, yeah. This would be great for the printers, you know. All you'd have to do is, all you literally have to do is, there's your first page, second page, third page, fourth page, fifth page. Just kind of go, at this stage, all you need to do is just go through it as you would. There's yeah. no, there's no kind of thinking of like what, num what pages the number should be. Because I know there's this kind of, People, the good thing about InDesign is it can do it all for you, uh, but I'll come on to the, the print booklet um, shortly. So, as I said, if you just carry on going through your booklet, um, like we kind of have, this is obviously the centre page. Yeah. Uh, so that will join up in the booklet. Um, what I would recommend though is make sure when you are doing paginations that you do everything in in fours, or you know, or twos, just so the booklet makes sense. Because when you come to paginate it, if it's if, if the pages are odd, it won't line up correctly. So what I would say is make sure pages are all even. Yeah. And double spreads are all odd. Does that make sense? So when it comes to fold it in half, a piece. Imagine this. This would be an A4 piece of paper. This would be an A5. This would be an A5. Yeah. So when this is folded in half, don't think this could be double sided. So it's going to be on the back of this. It's going to be. Yeah. Two other. So it's going to be four A5s on one piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I know it gets confusing. Yeah. It just, it just takes a while to get used to it as well. So um, you kind of got to plan, plan your way really, but I've kind of, I've just been going through it as normal, um, as you can see here. Um, so what we're going to do, uh, we'll get onto that. We're actually going to go to the, the A master page. It's up here. And if it's not up here, just go to window and, and uh, find the, the master pages, the pages, the pages panel. Um, yeah, I've noticed there's no numbers on the pages. Yeah, well, exactly. That's what we're going to do now. So what we're yeah. going to do is going to double click the master page. And what the master page does actually is um, it allows you to, if you put anything on this master page, it will duplicate on every other page. So if you want like a background or a number or um, a heading, that sort of kind of, or, or like a, a header or a footer, this is where you would put it. Um, you'd put it in here. So for example, if I was to type in. Tuck, for example, it's a lot bigger. And then another good thing about InDesign is as well, you can see it all has all these great like effects and presets that a lot of places don't, because obviously it's dominantly used for making brochures and booklets. So it yeah. has a lot of a lot of tools uh, regarding type. Yeah, it seems a lot more than Photoshop. Yeah, it's really advanced. It's really oh, advanced. Illustrator. Yeah, it's funny because uh, you, you, I mean people do make booklets in Photoshop and, and Illustrator you can, but obviously with InDesign you've just got a lot more tools when it comes to type. <laughs> well, the type yeah. side of things and the layout side. It's dominantly the, it's the composition and the layout we use InDesign for. Yeah. You know, it's a lot faster and quick, quicker. So here you can see, obviously I've put it on the master page and what happens when you click back on, it's it's on every <laughs> side of the left page. You can't see it, obviously, underneath the imagery that I've got on there, but you can see that 
it's, it's on there. So can you edit that, or do you have to edit no. it in the master You have page? to edit it in the master. You can't touch that. That's just stuck there now. Yeah. So... So it wouldn't be good for like um, layouts or anything like that, really. It wouldn't be like editing text on each page. Um, no, like normally it's something you used for like, like I say, photos or headers. If you just want yeah. something that wanted to be on every page, um, and what's good is you can actually have like um, illustrations, like certain illustrations that you want on every page. Yeah, like rather than thing. duplicating it <clears throat> and trying to line it up as accurate as you want. Obviously, doing it on master page is going to be accurate. Yeah, it's yeah. exactly the same place. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete that. And we're actually going to do some numbers. No, I like you said that. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get the text tool. You can press Command and T to get it up fast as well. And then we're going to go to Type at the top. And then we're going to Insert Character Markers. And as you can see in here, there's actually quite a lot of um, things we can do, but bullet, you know, bullet characters. Or, or there's loads of symbols. So this is actually a really useful place to be in, in the special characters options. But we want to go to markers and we want a current page number. You see it comes up with an A, um, which is because we're in that A master pages. So what this does is this will convert into a number. Yeah. Like an algorithm. It'll just continue on every page. Um, so we're going to make this a bit bigger. Maybe... 15 or something. Um, I'm just going to place it. I'm just doing this quite fast so we can get a good idea. You can kind of do what you want on these master pages as well. You can obviously put patterns, borders around it, you know, like a square around it or whatever. Kind of up to you. Change the colours of this at this point. All I'm going to do is, is Control C and Control V. I'm just going to copy that. I'm just going to roughly put it in place. You can align it, uh, obviously, with the alignment tools. What we're going to do is we're going to jump back on. And as you can see, um, obviously, we would have to do a completely different layout because obviously you take it into account the numbers. I haven't at this stage. Yeah. So I'll have to play around with the composition and move move things around. But as you can see, hmm. the, the numbers are underneath. So we've got... You can actually also... You won't put it on the back or the front page. Ah, but it will say two, so it won't put number one on the front page, which is great. Yeah, yeah. It automatically reads that. Yeah. So it'll start for it'll be two, three, four, five. Again, you can't, you can't, you can't see because I need to play along the composition. So, um, can, can you make them page numbers white? Say if you had a black shape behind it, like you do there, or do you just have to work around that? Work around it. Yeah, work around work it. Work around it. Um, the last one I found. Yeah. So, uh -huh. Yeah. Um, again, that's. I guess that's the beauty of design. Some 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 things are a bit different. Some some bits aren't. But um, so once we've got the numbers, and we've played around the composition, which we would. Um, so you know, this might get swapped over to that side, and so the numbers visible. Yeah. As you can see, it's telling you that it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and so on. Um, I think this is 16 pages, so, and then we've got the end page, 15, yeah, 14, 15, 16. Another cool thing is uh, a lot of people don't really understand the um, the two bounding boxes either, which is, I've always, you know, like, um, for example, yeah, you can crop. You see that you've got the, the brown. Nobody really knows if it's a brown or a red line. Yeah. But, uh, if you double click it, obviously it comes up with the, 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 the red brown the box. And all that is is like a mask. So if you actually, you can actually just put it in. Hmm. This is um, where you can move it, the blue box. And then when you click inside, that's where you can move it inside of the blue box. Ah, right. So, so like if you see here, this is the blue box that this is in. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just moving it inside. And it'll never, it'll just crop at the blue box. It'll just yeah. crop at the blue line. You see that? Yeah. So if you made that smaller, obviously the mask could get smaller. Yeah. Yeah. So like, if I was, if I was to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, 
it's just knowing the difference between them and so on. That's um, quite handy, that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, another thing is, is which, which is pretty cool, and we'll move just back down, is um, when it comes to type as well, if you've got like a newsletter or you've got like a brochure, you've got quite, quite a bit of heavy bit of information. And, you know, sometimes it takes time just to line it all up, etc. Now, what's really good is to use is the um, the text frame option. And what this does, this allows you to have so many columns, numbers, gutters. And the gutters is the, the, the gaps between the um, the sections, you know? Yeah. So this, yeah. this would be a gutter in between. So if you hit preview, you can kind of... I'm, I'm just playing around with this bit of text here. Um, so you can actually, the numbers you can have, you can have three, you see how it's just gone in, and then you can actually have the gutter space. That is so easy, isn't it? You can actually have the gutter space, but it can be quite temperamental, because you've got to like kind of play around still with where the text sits in. Yeah. But in terms of, it's actually quite fast, so... It seems to give you a lot more control, like especially with where you want stuff placed. Yeah. And you see it gives you like a space in between as well. See like the spaces around. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah. But again, that that's kind of up to you and kind of how you, you how you want it to. And again you can you can't do anything like this, can you really? In for you'd have to do all this manually in Photoshop if you wanted to place text like that. There yeah. there isn't an option in Photoshop to do that. Yeah. It's uh this I mean yeah, there's just a lot you can do kinda of with it, to be fair. Um Obviously, I've just kind of quickly played around and kind of got something like that for mine. So, would you say InDesign's best for booklets, leaflets, like stuff like that, like um, big yeah. ma magazines and stuff? Yeah. That's, what it's, that's what it's for. Yeah. So, there's just a lot of quick elements on here that, that are a lot faster and that you can do. Yeah. So that's what it's done before, it's InDesign. Yeah. It's a, it's a composition, isn't it? And uh, layout software, so... Has all the kind of right elements, I think. Um, one of the things, is, so once you've actually kind of done your booklet, we want to we want to print the booklet, of course. We'll move all this stuff back down. Um, you used to when when doing it, you used to go to just export, yeah, yeah, and that would be enough. Um, you know, that that would be enough. You could just send it to the printers. Um, and they'll they'll do it from there and sort of kind of thing. But now they've actually they, 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 there's a print booklet option at the top down the bottom. Yeah. And file. And what we do here is we go to preview, and you can see that currently the pages are paginated. You see that it says two, and it says fifteen. Yeah. Do you know what that means? So that's the second page, and obviously the second from last page, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So you can imagine they're going to print together. But when you're layering these pieces of paper on top of each other, they're gonna, they're, it's gonna make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so three's the, gonna sit on top of two, four's gonna sit on top. And that works all out for you. It yeah. works all out for you. So you, don't, you you just carry on designing as you want, and then you can just pass it to the printer. You can just put it to pagination. <laughs> but um, yeah. again, here's the other option. So what we're gonna do is you can you can have a print preset, so you can make set your own printers up, etc. Um, we can put it to, we'll just keep it to custom, I guess. Um, the pages, all pages, and then you've got the saddle stitch, which this is what we want. Uh, this one would be more for kind of like glue bound, bound in books, like single pages, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but we, we want the two up saddle stitch, which which means staples. Right, right. So yeah. you can just be a staple booklet. Basically. So how do you how do you know this? Is it just over time? What you are? Oh. Uh, just over time. Yeah. I guess what I just what I've learned just in different areas and. And if you were completely new to InDesign, like you you wouldn't understand this. Like obviously, I'm looking at that and it's looking a bit alien to me as you're explaining it. But um, is there anything what helps you understand this in InDesign? Is or do you just research it or go to the help menu or anything? Um. I guess it just comes over time. Yeah. Uh, just playing around. Playing around, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think as well. Like I've kind of got I've got an understanding in the background in kind of book binding as well, so that did help. Yeah. Um, obviously, going through university helped as well. So, um, and as you can see, this is a bit too big. So we'll go to print settings, and we'll just put scale to fit, and that's inside there. But we don't want that. So we want. There you go. So you can see that it's now fit inside. We've got two fifteen. We've got three fourteen four. See, even good example here. There's the second half of the the bridge. Yeah. So eventually, that's just going to match up with the other half. Yeah. So when you print this, it just matches up. Um, but would what are you gonna say, sir? So would this say like obviously if you weren't a printer, you you wouldn't print this. So would you just export this as a PDF and give it to the printer, and they'd know what to do from there? Yeah, you just tell them to print it, and um, well they can open it and they can see. You just tell them that's already paginated, so I kind of think. Yeah. Here you can see that there's a blank page. I've left this blank page. That's just just so I can um, explain um, what this is. Um, so obviously sometimes people don't make full booklets and they, can't, they don't have enough content so they've got to put in a blank page or you know whatever kind of reasons to make it an even number make it an even number because you always have to print books in even numbers yeah so what you would do um, always make sure print blank pages as well always have that clicked on so it, it's included if you don't have that clicked it will just um, it just, it just, the pagination just be completely out as well when it comes to print it. Yeah, because it'll be odd one at then, so. Yeah, so just, yeah, it's exactly. So just make sure that that's always ticked as well. Um, like with the setup, kind of keep it to scale, whatever the size document is. We're fitting A5s into an A4, so two, I, two A5s goes in A4. So I just kind of keep it on A4 and it'll just bounce yeah. out. Um, marks and bleeds, I'll dock all of them on. Um, the colour bars is probably, I probably won't have that on to be fair. I'd keep the bleed on. Now what this does is, it gives it a, um, we've got a three millimetre bleed on here. And what that does is you send it to the printers and it allows them to, they don't, you, don't, you don't want them to cut into the artwork when they're cutting, so you always add an extra couple of millimetres on, which allows them to cut in. So just be aware of the artwork be put into the bleed basically. So that that's basically just a safe area. Yeah, it's a safe area is like a trim line. So yeah, I would with every InDesign document or any document I do that I know is going to print, I would always put like you know two to five millimeter bleed on on anything, Illustrator, you know, Photoshop, anything if it's going to print because you just don't want the printers cutting into any of your artwork. So I will just hit OK, and as you can see here, we've got the we've got the bleed, we've got the cut marks on there as well. Um, so that's that's kind of done, and then we go to the summary. It tells you a bit about what you're printing, etc. Yeah. And then you just hit print, and then it'll save as a PDF. And you can send it to the printers. Um, and that's pretty much it, really. Um, so that's probably it for this tutorial. But if you'd like to come back next week, um, there will be something exciting um, happening next week. Um, so stay tuned and thank you very much. Thank you for being here, Alex, as well. Yeah, no, no problem. It's uh, it's it's actually you've taught me a few things to be fair about InDesign, so that's great. Oh, good. As long as I, <laughs> as long as I can help. <laughs> no, thank you very right, very thank, much. Don't thank for, you. Don't forget to subscribe and follow on next week and uh, like all our social media, etc. And um, thanks for stopping by. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs>